Camera, fight! <laughs> My most anticipated camera comparison of the year, the Vivo X80 Pro versus the Xiaomi 12S Ultra battle of the big camera sensors. A quick disclaimer, I am not a side-by-side -side camera pixel peeper. We're gonna try and talk about these two a little more holistically. Not just zoom in on which phone does the better colors, but look at more practical, real-world shooting, camera app performance, and crunch a little more math on these camera sensors. If you just wanna see people zoom into a photo a thousand percent, get out now. This is not the video for you. Vivo really surprised me last year and the X80 Pro this year has proven to be one of the best high level phone cameras available. The Xiaomi is coming in with a radical new camera sensor and class leading performance. Quad camera versus triple camera. Zeiss versus Leica. Putting an incredible camera in your pocket, these two represent the bleeding edge tier of mobile photography. And the fight is a little closer than the spec sheet might have people believe. I told you I was a geek, so we're starting with the math. We're at a point where we should really start highlighting equivalent performance to full frame cameras. Both of these main cameras have equivalent focal lengths of around 23 millimeters. If you were to take a full frame Sony camera and put a 24 millimeter lens on the front of that camera, the field of view, how wide that image is, would look like both of these phones. The Vivo's main camera has an actual aperture of f1.6, the Xiaomi has an actual aperture of f1.9. The ratio looks a little smaller for the Xiaomi, but in terms of equivalent performance, the Vivo will resemble a full frame camera at f5.6. The Xiaomi clocks in at an equivalent aperture of F5. This is a very close race. We're talking maybe a third of a stop difference in terms of optical characteristics like bokeh and depth of field. But I really can't stress this enough. If you took a full frame camera, put a 24 millimeter lens on it, and you walked around at F5, which would give you a great balance of subject and background for street photography, you would have a very similar field of view to what these two phones produce optically. No software, no portrait modes, the math checks out. The hardware advantage for the Xiaomi, this bump up in sensor size means our binned pixel size is enormous. The Vivo's no slouch. It has 50 million 1.2 micron pixels and binned down to 12 megapixel output, we get a very big 2.4 micron pixel. The Xiaomi also has 50 million pixels, but they're 1.6 micron pixels and binned down to 12 megapixel output, we get huge 3.2 micron pixels. We need to nerd out on this in two directions. On the phone side, the iPhone 12 Pro had a 12 megapixel camera with 1.4 micron pixels. The 12 Pro Max had a 12 megapixel camera with 1.7 micron pixels. The Xiaomi has 50 million pixels that are almost the same size as the 12 million pixels on the 12 Pro Max. If you took just a 12 megapixel crop out of the center of the Xiaomi, you only used a quarter of the sensor's total resolution, it would land pretty close to the 12 Pro Max. In a one year cycle, the iPhone cameras got a little bigger. The Xiaomi is quadrupling the resolution of a sensor with pixels that are decently close in size before you bin those pixels down for 12 megapixel output. Because when you bin them down, you end up with 3.2 micron pixels that are larger than what you would find inside a Panasonic GH6. The GH6 is a production grade micro four thirds camera body and without a lens clocks in at $2,200. That camera? has three micron pixels. The 12S Ultra is a stunning application of brute force optical physics. I've broken down the Vivo math in a separate video, and these numbers are still really exciting, if maybe not quite as grand. But Vivo is playing a brainier game with the V1 Plus coprocessor. Vivo's processing game looks to close the gap on standalone cameras through image stacking and better HDR performance. Where we get the title of this video, Brains versus Brawn. You've stayed with me this long talking about numbers 
Let's look at some photo samples. In practical conditions, these two look very similar. Starting a little closer to the main lens, you can see some subtle differences in depth of field blur. How just a corner of this pine cone is falling out of focus on the Xiaomi, and a little more of the pine cone stays in focus on the Vivo. This is extremely difficult to measure in an outdoor shot, making sure I'm staying consistent from the subject. But we're talking about less depth of field difference than focusing on a human eye and moving to the bridge of your nose. But beyond our subject here, both produce an absolutely lovely background blur. This is natural focus fall off from the lens. This is not a software portrait mode. Doing some obnoxious pixel peeping out to the corner of the frame, there's no objective or rational claim to one of these having nicer bokeh, they're both stunning. I have an indoor raw shot that highlights a slight advantage for the Xiaomi. A portrait distance from my stuffed dog Rex, and the bookshelf is about six feet behind the pup. The speaker on my shelf is catching my light, and the bokeh balls on the Vivo are ever so slightly harder edged and ever so slightly less circular. The Xiaomi, just that touch softer and rounder. This is the kind of extreme photo examination one needs to apply to quantify these differences. This is a step above all other phones except for a handful of other ultra tier cameras. And main sensor to main sensor, I'd say these two are barely nudging out phones like the Pixel 6 Pro, the Note 22, and the Sony Xperia Pro i. All right, back to another outdoor shot. The HDR output helps us frame some of the philosophical differences. Vivo looks to maximize light and detail in every situation you shoot in. And when the HDR triggers, it works harder at finding information in bright sections of this flower. Xiaomi, in a similar situation, didn't paint in as much petal detail from multiple exposures, but lifted the shadow detail more in the background. In a wider landscape, we see something similar. Without even needing to pixel peep, we can see how much harder the Vivo is working at lifting details and highlights. But here's a situation where the Xiaomi working more contrast delivers a more pleasant image to my eye. When your subject is in warm light, here with the sun a little lower on the horizon, but not quite golden hour light, the Vivo in auto mode with Zeiss color is definitely warming up the shot a little more than the Xiaomi with Leica Authentic. A quick tangent, this is one of the trickiest aspects to balance and compare. Lining up sample shots, there are four different permutations of auto exposure and HDR on the Xiaomi and six different combinations on the Vivo. It makes a practical oranges to oranges comparison almost impossible except for raw files. But both of these phones shoot such fun JPEGs we don't only want to live in raw. Back to the photo samples. One quick raw example in bright outdoor light, the Vivo on its own definitely meters brighter than the Xiaomi. These are incredible shots from phones. This kind of raw data, absolutely fantastic base information to edit from. Okay, moving indoors, TK and I took a field trip to the Peterson Car Museum in Los Angeles, raw to raw, on my favorite Batmobile, were pretty closely matched. From nose to tail, the Xiaomi is just a touch softer for focus fall off. The posters on the back wall, a little fuzzier. A three quarter shot also shows the Vivo lens is slightly more prone to JJ Abrams flares slicing through your frame. A quick night mode shot, this was a really challenging subject. Red is always tricky to expose for, and the surface of this car is smooth and highly reflective. Again, we see Vivo aggressively lift information in darker conditions and creates a stunningly bright image. The Xiaomi night mode is not boosting brightness as aggressively and delivers the contrastier shot. Both of these are technologically impressive. The Vivo is ready to go to social media. The Xiaomi is a better image to edit. But zooming in, Vivo more effortlessly sharpens the final output, more structure adjusting. It's not as fake looking as on a Samsung. It's kind of impressive how we can clearly make out the screw thread on this headlight. My issue with other phones is not just computational photography. It's computational photography done poorly. Vivo sets a high watermark for computational photography done well. One more indoor low light raw sample, you got it. Both are impressive. This shot was taken in almost movie theater dark conditions. You can see the wraparound screen behind the car showing a racing film and only some subtle dim lighting is spotlighting the car. From this distance, 
in this darkness, making out the stitching on a baseball is jaw dropping. But this is also a nice test of noise and grain. Larger subpixels and in a situation requiring a higher ISO, the Xiaomi is subtly but visibly delivering a nicer grain. That to my eye, I think this would be difficult to discern from the output on my micro four thirds cameras. Moving on, when things get dark though. The Vivo demonstrates some of the most brutally impressive processing I've ever seen. Now, one of my favorite shots to start with, a JPEG from this location looks like this. The Xiaomi night mode looks really good producing this, and the Vivo puts out this. Another brief tangent for, for any of you photography intellectuals who might pollute my comments with some hack witticism like, but shouldn't the shots at night be dark? <laughs> Again, we're not concerned about computational photography, we're concerned about computational photography done poorly. The Vivo is able to assist in a challenging situation where a proper camera would require a tripod. And what we get is a clearer, sharper, cleaner, brighter image than a phone with a brute force larger sensor. If you can get this image, why wouldn't you? Because if you can get this image, you can also get even cleaner, darker images in less time. Because here's what I'm talking about. When you really need to rely on a phone camera and we're in an extreme situation, parts of my neighborhood get dark. This is what you would expect from a normal phone camera because there's only these two little walkway lights. In night mode, the Vivo took a long exposure. I had to hold still for seven seconds but it produced this. The best of three shots from the Xiaomi night mode produced this. If you haven't really tried using these phones, or if you've just been listening to basic reviewers talking about average consumers, you have no clue how far we can push a smartphone camera. The limits are insane. Show me anyone who can hold still for a seven second exposure on a mirrorless camera, and I'll show you someone who probably shouldn't be a photographer because they have hands steadier than surgeons. I do not have surgeon steady hands. What Vivo is doing is mind boggling. The way it contributes to your photography is a huge assist and it allows you to drive a phone camera harder than I've ever seen before. And when you don't need extreme performance, it's faster and more capable than other phones that lack this kind of image processing. There is no excuse if all you can think at the end of a demonstration like that is, but I want a phone with blurrier, darker shots because it's more authentic. Then I gotta say you're terrible at tech and photography. Double trouble. Because we all know real photographers only use lenses that mimic the field of view of the human eye and they never use additional equipment like tripods and flashes to make more dramatic shots. And they only use ISO to simulate the human range of vision. They never take bracketed shots for HDR. They never take longer exposures. They never edit to make a scene look more fantastic or dramatic. It's so frustrating. I have to make those arguments sound ridiculous because people complain about phones not being exciting or improvements not really benefiting consumers. Uh, we didn't see any differences moving to a larger sensor in our phone review. But those people complaining aren't trying to do anything new. There's a lot of really exciting new happening. And I've got folks in my comments claiming to be tech enthusiasts saying things like, but dark photos though. Phones are now democratizing advanced photography and editing tasks. And they're doing it in camera better than standalone cameras. And it's always the funny point. I know I'm gonna get someone in these comments like, oh, but Juan, I don't see anyone making these kinds of complaints because I've had to go so ridiculously overboard in ridiculing the argument before they can make the argument, but now they're gonna just jump into my comments and I mean, I think he's right, but why does his tone have to be so aggressive? I will not suffer hack comments on my videos, but I digress. One last example of the hardware versus software division between these two, let's look at another raw image at night. True raw to raw. I love that the Xiaomi can pop out this detail, clarity, 
the quality of grain, these subjective elements that we grade an image on for its photographic qualities. The photo itself isn't any grand composition, but these phones are doing incredible things in the dark, like pulling the lines of this grill out of the image noise. The Vivo is very good, the Xiaomi is a little better, but the Vivo still has one last computational trick up its sleeve with super raw capture. This is not a raw image in any traditional sense. This is a computationally stacked DNG, and it looks like this. That's stunning. This is a 24 megabyte file to edit from, and it's an incredible shortcut. Basically what you get is similar to taking a five shot bracketed exposure from a micro four thirds camera on a tripod and running some decent noise reduction filters on top of that. It's a composite. It's a stack of several raw files, but it's not a finished image. You just have more data and dynamic range to work with and you don't have to start from scratch in the editing process. It's not going to be the right solution for all situations, but it's way better to have this than not have it. Samsung is trying to copy this with Expert Raw. Apple does something similar for iPhone Pro Raw. Vivo does it the best. I mean, let's do a silly 400% zoom and see how in really dark conditions, the camera nailed the tiny fins and subtle dents in this truck grill. If there's any addition to the Xiaomi camera app that I'd like to see, it's this kind of raw stacking. <laughs> okay, that was a ton, and we've just compared main sensors. The companion sensors are well matched too, as a brief conversation, the ultra wides are very similarly matched. And when there are differences, they're usually in software. Raw to raw, only superficial differences. For telephotos, Vivo has a dual sensor strategy. We use two smaller sensors at different focal lengths. Xiaomi has one bigger telephoto at the longer focal length. I like the Xiaomi hardware better here. Like the Pixel 6 Pro, the larger telephoto is much better in challenging indoor and mixed light situations. The Vivo's 50 millimeter equivalent is a really fun sensor to shoot on in good light for head and shoulder portrait shots. It's very flattering, but whenever I can, I take some large steps back from my subject and the 120 millimeter on the Xiaomi is just better, especially against the really little telephoto on the Vivo. Even in daylight, the Xiaomi is putting out a nicer image, better detail, better color, better separation and depth of field between subject and background. Indoors, there's just no contest. The Xiaomi hardware advantage is crushing the Vivo telephoto. And the hardware advantage for the Xiaomi extends to video. The Vivo telephotos can't shoot 4K 60 frame per second video, the Xiaomi can. And lastly, just talking about camera apps and controls, both phones are great point and shoot solutions, but they're neither as easy to use as a Pixel. If you only think of a camera as a shutter button, nothing is beating the Pixel right now. Vivo and Xiaomi start off great for auto modes. They really shine when you take a little time to dig deeper. When you put just a little thought behind your composition and you understand you're familiar with the different tools available. Both phones are excellent co-pilots for creating interesting images. There are a lot of different modes and settings to familiarize yourself with. Anyone scoring these phones solely on the out of the box auto mode performance is doing an incredible disservice to the phone photography conversation. The Vivo app is a little stickier. Features like voice shutter and level guides stay active after closing the app. It bugs me. <laughs> it's really annoying when I have to turn that stuff back on every time the Xiaomi camera app is closed. Both have terrific options in different settings for different modes. I like the layout on the Xiaomi better where you can swipe a panel of camera modes up instead of scrolling through camera modes on the Vivo. It's a huge omission that the X80 Pro only gives you focus peaking in video and only up to 4K 30 and only from the ultra wide and main sensors. There is no focus peaking in photography mode that I can find. The 12S Ultra has focus peaking in both photo and video from all three sensors and at all video resolutions and frame rates, which is correct. That's the way it should be. You just have to turn it on every time you fire up the camera. That should just be on by default. Xiaomi is good at the fun stuff, portrait mode and night mode, but Vivo's computational game is a step ahead. When you fire up a portrait mode, 
you have multiple options to recreate specific Zeiss lenses. The Xiaomi has two options for soft focus and swirly bokeh, but it's not as fun as the options on the Vivo. Again, even down to the app, we see those differences between software control and processing. The Xiaomi is more direct, it's more camera-like. The Vivo has more assisted modes and fun stuff. It's incredibly difficult drawing a conclusion here. Main sensor to main sensor, it's an epic battle of hardware and software. For being photography-focused phones branded with camera company collaborations, I can't honestly say there is one winner. They each seem to complete the weaknesses of the other, where I adore the sensors on the Xiaomi, the processing on the Vivo is incredible. I would have expected a little more of a lead from the Xiaomi thanks to this new one inch sensor, but the Vivo is able to keep pace better than I was expecting in all but the most pixel peepery kinds of comparisons. But when viewed holistically, it's the telephoto sensor that helps the Xiaomi eke out a victory in this showdown. All other aspects of both phones being compared, that's the one differentiator I think hobbyists and photographers might care about. Both of these phones are pushing the limits on pocket computer photography. The Xiaomi pushes just a little bit farther. The last thought I wanna leave you off with here, if your needs are more casual, you just like to take some point and shoot family pics for social media, every now and then you don't really live in your camera app, these cameras are great but they really won't do much for you over a phone like the Pixel 6a. If you're curious about photography at all, if you're looking for better tools and you have ideas in mind about content and composition, these phones are incredibly capable platforms. The Vivo main camera sensor is roughly the same size as 16 millimeter film. The Xiaomi is larger than Super 16. Feature films, professional movies are still shot on 16 mil and you, can put an image sensor in your pocket that hangs with low budget cinema film cameras. These phones are not average consumer and they really have no business being reviewed at the level of average basic push the shutter button. Whew. Okay, that was way too much talking. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this showdown up. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel. All the support lately has been absolutely fantastic. Those of you who are checking out links in my descriptions, if you're heading to my home site, somegadgetguy.com and buying a little merch, or if you're joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. Patrons got a sneak peek of this video before I put it out publicly. They know what's going on with advanced smartphone photography. They're basically the coolest tech pals in the multiverse. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Twitch, not so much on the Facebooks or the Instagrams. And I will catch you all on the next showdown.